Hi! Look! Christmas decorations! That's festive. Alright, November book review time. Kayla chose Beta by Rachel Cohn. I have to say, I kept cracking up while reading, which kind of ruined the in-world drama. First, this book seemed to have a few different main messages. Which is cool if you can flesh them out in further books, but not cool if people stop reading after the first book. One of the main messages was about classism or like the growing disparity between rich and poor and like the 1% or whatever. We don't really see many poor people or really any poor people, but from what you can tell from the other characters' conversations, the rest of the world's pretty destitute. Except on this magical island of Demesne. Everyone is super rich and all they have to do is swim and play and sleep. The air is artificially super oxygenated and the ocean is controlled for temperature and wave danger. It's paradise. So much so that when they brought over servants to do all of the work, the servants didn't want to work any more than their masters did. So they had to devise a new plan, which is where the clones come in. The, these clones are made from recently deceased people and they have no souls and they have computers for brains. Which leads to some hilarity as computer-brained main character clone Elysia attempts to hang out with the regular teenagers. She has to keep looking up words and cultural references and makes a lot of little mistakes trying to fit in. Cute, but also a bit annoying after a while. The clone thing is one of the other like main messages of the book. Like Harry Potter house elves, the clones are made to serve. They're programmed to not want freedom, and they don't even have souls, so do they even count as people? Or that's at least what the owners like to say. There's an insurrection brewing though, which gives the book kind of an underground railroad feel. There's also a drug trafficking angle, and the particular drug, Raxia, seems to make the clones rebellious. So that's interesting. Seems like pretty standard YA dystopian sci-fi when I say it like that. But you know the romance subplot that all of those books have? Well, I'm not exactly sure what the author was thinking, but the romance parts of this book were kind of distracting from the story. The language used by Alicia is really quite awkward, even if you take into account her literally born yesterday condition. For example, you know you own me, Z. His voice says, and my heart leaps, and my loins feel suddenly alive. His voice, so gravelly, strikes directly at a lustful drive I didn't know I possessed. The voice is a sensual stroke that tingles my skin. You know you own me, Z. I couldn't help laughing when I read that. It's like the author really wants to write an adult romance novel and keeps forgetting she's writing YA. It breaks the flow of the story a little bit. Overall, the premise of the book was interesting. The clone thing and the weather-controlled island and all of that. But I think it was trying to tell us too many things. And the narrator's voice was pretty annoying and the romance parts were intrusive. So, happy Thanksgiving everyone! And Kayla, I'll see you tomorrow on the vlog and later in the week in real life. Bye!